And what would be an example of when you would use SERS in the field? So for me, if I was in the field and there was, let's say, a pike, and you wanted to see what they were using that pipe you for. You mean like a smoking pipe? So, or like a pipe crack pipe yeah. or a hair, you know, are they using crack, heroin, meth? What are they, what are they smoking out of that pipe? And what you can do is actually rinse off some of that with uh, methanol or just get a swab and go in there and then put that into the SERS methanol vial, shake that up, let it uh, interact for a little bit to get it all into the methanol. And then you take a droplet of it and put it on that SERS interface. Let that methanol then evaporate off. And while it's there and interacting, it's going to, all those particles are going to attach to the uh, the metal that's it, adhered on the SERS interface. And so what's going to happen is you're going to get that million-fold increase. Mm-hmm. You're having to use a specific SERS library that's developed to go with the SERS technology you're using. But now you've got that trace amount that was too low to see with traditional Raman spectroscopy. You would have had to go to something like mass spectrometry, which yeah. is a lot more expensive than what we're able to do here. Mm-hmm. And so you're talking four, five, sometimes 10 times the amount of cost mm-hmm. to do that. So in this case, that's the number one race is we have a trace residue and you're just trying to see what was it that they were doing. Can you use that then to get a warrant to go and get further information? The other way to do it is, let's say you have somebody who's overdosed and now you take your ramen and you look at their material that's there and you say, well, it's lactose. Well, they didn't overdose on lactose, okay? And so what you end up doing is saying lactose is the 95% of the sample, but the 5% that's in there is what killed them. And that 5% could be something like fentanyl. It could be heroin. It could be a mixture of fentanyl, cocaine, and other things. And what you want to do is see that small part of a larger whole. And so you have either trace, which is a very light amount of something there in the microgram level, or you have a small, power, a small amount of a whole. And those are the two ways that we use SERS technologies to take raw to that next level. Mm-hmm. And can you use SERS on any chemical? You have to have it in your library. So we use SERS a lot on explosives. Uh, we use it on... Uh, Chemical warfare agents working on some of that right now. But reality is SERS can be used on a lot of different materials, especially if the ramen area that we're interested in is in that part that gets enhanced. Uh, when people are doing SERS research in the laboratories, like, for instance, at uh, CCDC, the Chem uh, Bio Center for the U.S. military, when they're doing SERS research, which they do a lot of, they can look at whether it's silver or gold or platinum, what are the types of metals that they're attaching to, and then how much material, and then what part of the spectrum are we trying to enhance. And each of those decisions that they make will help them get better capability for measuring these things in trace levels. I see. And so for a substance like, well, let's say heroin, for example, does the standard Raman spectrum look different than a SERS spectrum for heroin? It actually will. And it's only in certain parts. So what happens here is if I have that Raman spectrum, uh, that's the heroin spectrum, and it's about, you know, we're talking coming down the whole part of the instrument, only a portion of it gets enhanced. So this part here stayed the same. And so the amplitude of the peaks and the width of the peaks probably stayed the same. But this part here went way up. So the spectrum will look very different, but it really has the same characteristic peaks. It's just they're enhanced for a difference. So they're actually, they can shift slightly just based upon what they're attached to. But yeah, it's it's very similar, but not similar enough that you can use the traditional library. You've got to enhance your library and make a new one. I see. Okay, well, thanks very much for that. That was really interesting. Thank you.